as the fish moves, now it is able to detect the object irrespective of the exposure and it says this salmon species is steel head and you can see that even this partial exposure, which is the head, it is able to detect. So the model can get so good. The Nisp Valley River Foundation is an NGO which, uh, which is based out of Washington and works on conservation of salmon in uh, the Nisp Valley River. So they work with a local Indian tribe in tracking salmon throughout the year and they have sophisticated solution for that. So they have camera traps and sensors placed in the riverbed in strategic points. So this is how it works. So there is a camera trap and there are two sensors on either side. As the fish swims past the first sensor, the camera starts recording. So this is a continuous video which is being recorded. And uh, after it passes through the uh, second sensor, the video shuts down. So that way this clip could be anywhere from 15 seconds to a minute depending on how fast the fish swims by or how, uh, how much it enjoys the attention because we have seen fish which just hang in there. There are thousands of videos like this which get captured and these are taken uh, back into the office and then there are biologists who go through these videos, the full video including the empty frames, partial exposures and you can imagine the hours they spend for every camera trap which has been placed. So they spend a lot of time to identify first which species of salmon it is and uh, the, the, number, the number of sightings and so on. So that is what they were doing and uh, they approached us for a much more automated and a sophisticated solution. So uh, we solved this in three stages. So stage one was identifying uh, and training the model. So we used deep learning uh, for this and we partnered with Microsoft uh, AI for Earth research team. We had to process this say a minute of video, extract that one frame from that which best represents the fish and because otherwise like I mentioned there are partial exposures at times it just straight uh, faces the camera. Uh, we don't want those shots, they may not be represented. So we had to extract that and then label it. So we did it uh, using Microsoft uh, Visual Object Tagging Tool, uh, VOPT if you're familiar. So that uh, was able to automate this process and passing the, uh, the video we were able to extract with the, the right exposure. And so that was the labeling stage and if you look at some of the snapshots I can share. Uh, so these were the actual pictures from the video. We have uh, different species <coughs> at a different exposure. You can see that the size and the, the angle and some of the waters are muddy at times. So there are various differences. So we had to first draw a bonding box around the fish and label the species. This was stage one, creating the, the training data. And we had, like I mentioned, about 1000 thousand videos to start with. So we trained the model with this and stage two was to set up the actual deep learning architecture. So initially we used uh, something called a faster uh, CNN architecture and uh, that uh, used AlexNet as a model and uh, it gave us good results. So uh, accuracy was over 80 percentage but the problem was that uh, the training time took a couple of weeks. So for even running one pass for one configuration it would have taken a few weeks. So that's where we applied something called transfer learning, where you retrain a model and uh, with other data, and then you place it back into it, uh, place it back into this scenario, and retrain it with just a few of the specific images. So this is a, it's a technical way to approach it. But in summary, uh, transfer learning can partially solve the problem of the need for huge volumes of data, because uh, typically deep learning is data hungry. You need tens of thousands of data points to train the model. When you have something like 100 or just a thousand images, how do you train there? So that's where transfer learning when you have other fish uh, data set. There is some repeatability in terms of general shape of fish, ignore salmon, right? General shape of fish or the, the, the scenario, water and other things it can learn from other videos. So you train the model first on those aspects and then you put it into this data and you retrain it with the very specific the Nisp Valley River videos, then it is able to learn much faster. So you're saving some time in the process. So this is transfer learning and with that we were able to cut down the training time from weeks to few hours. So that was one and then we tried a couple of other models. Eventually we, we settled on uh, YOLO uh, V3 model which, uh, which is, uh, expands to YOLO, YOLO only once. Uh, so that is what we used and uh, it gave us much uh, better stability, though the accuracy was slightly lower, but in stage 2 where we uh, brought in the, the model and the architecture and like I mentioned faster, faster RCNN and then uh, YOLO V3, uh, 
um, the accuracy dropped a little bit, but it was stable and was able to do a good job. And the other benefit was YOLO was able to do it much faster because you're talking about videos and we want this model to be able to detect every single frame because it's not an image. So that we were able to do and it was fairly successful. So now let me quickly show you one video. This is a public case study, so I can just show you the, the video of the model in action. As the fish swims in, uh, YOLO will be able to identify uh, what is the, uh, like first detecting the fish and second saying which, which species it is. You can see that it is as the fish moves, now it is able to detect the object irrespective of the exposure and it says this salmon species is steel head. And you can see that even this partial exposure, which is the head, it is able to detect. So the model can get so good. So uh, this was stage two. And stage three is where we had to package all of this into an application for the biologists to use it. Uh, the, the feed had to automatically come into uh, the web application so that the model runs in the background. And given a month or a few months, um, the, the model is able to continuously do it and create a visual dashboard of it saying this month so many sightings have been, this is the number of species which have gone through and let them click and go down to an individual sighting and be able to watch the video so that if there is a misclassification then and there they can correct it, uh, can uh, relabel the species and the model takes it as an input. So this was the, the complete process where we packaged all of it into an API and uh, this makes it easier to deploy and use it in multiple locations as well. So this is a three-stage process uh, in summary. We also published this, so in case you're interested further uh, about this, there's, this is available on the Microsoft partner portal. Uh, so it will be there in the, the deck. Once you get it, you can go through this link. Uh, we had our design team also create uh, a small, small comic strip 